Hi everybody, welcome back to Small Caliber Arms Review. I'm Richard. Today we're going to be taking a look at a firearm from the popular series uh, AMC's Hell on Wheels. It ran from 2011 to 2016 and it took place during post-Civil War Reconstruction era and followed the building of the Transcontinental Railroad. Now one of the characters in there was played by Colm Meany who played uh, Mr. Durant. He was the railroad tycoon that um, led the charge to build the Transcontinental Railroad. Now most of the time in the series, uh, Mr. Meany or uh, Mr. Durant can be seen carrying a Allen and Thurber pepper box, but occasionally he carried this, which was an Ethan Allen uh, double barrel 36 caliber uh, percussion pistol. The series used a lot of popular uh, reproduction firearms and I believe that this is one of the ones that they used in the series. It can be seen in a couple scenes not really clear as to what it is but this is what it appears to be to me. Now I do have a couple examples here. This is a an original uh, Belgian uh, percussion double barrel pistol. I think this one is 40 caliber and I would really like to fire it, but inside the left barrel, there's some pretty heavy pitting in there, which leads me to believe that it's probably not safe to fire. At least I don't want to risk it being an original. This one, I believe, it's kind of hard to tell, but by the Belgian proof mark that's on there, could be anywhere from a 1810 to 1893. And being that it's a percussion gun, I'm thinking it's somewhere in the mid 1800s, probably 1850s, 1860s, somewhere around there. It uh, appears to be a functioning one, and this one does have two triggers in it. There's one that is straight up and down for the left barrel, and one that is curved for the right barrel, which means that this was made for a right-handed person. That way your finger can reach through and get the, cur or the straight one for the left barrel, and then can be used closest to your trigger finger for the right barrel on there. Like I said, we're not gonna fire this one as much as I would like to, and it really, it came with a really nice uh, holster that somebody made. I don't know when it was made, the holster. It appears to be much more modern than the actual firearm itself. Fits right down in there. It got a Mexican coin concho on one side and a couple other little conchos around it. Uh, very cool little gun, just probably not safe to fire. But we are going to be taking a much closer look at the Ethan Allen. This is a reproduction probably made in the mid to late 70s and in very good condition. I have fired it a couple times already. We're going to take a closer look at it and then we're going to get it out on the range and take a few shots with it. All right, now there's a few notable Ethan Allens throughout history and this is not the Ethan Allen that was the uh, Revolutionary War Patriot uh, back in the 1770s or so. This is also not the Ethan Allen of the furniture industry which started uh, I think 1939, somewhere around there. This is the Ethan Allen that existed from 1808 to 1871 and he was an arms maker. Uh, he also partnered up with a couple other um, arms manufacturers throughout the history. There was uh, Allen and Thurber, there was Allen and Wheelock, uh, and Allen and Thurber is probably more known for the pepper box, uh, where Ethan Allen was probably known a little more for the Ethan Allen uh, percussion pistols of this type. Uh, and this one was made by Hops or Hoppies, uh, however you say it. They're the same um, Firearms accessories or uh, firearms cleaners, uh, different different um, cleaning solvents and stuff that they make nowadays. But at one time they were into the uh, reper uh, uh -huh. the reproduction percussion pistols, and this one, like I said, is a 36 caliber, and it does say on the side of it, Ethan and Allen by Hoppies or Hops, and. It's just a pretty cool little little pistol, and like I said, I believe this is the one that was used in the series Hell on Wheels because just because of the look of it, uh, I, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. I picked this one up at an antique store uh, probably back in December sometime around there and just haven't done a video on it yet. Now we are going to load this thing up. I've got my uh, period correct tactical nylon uh, possibles bag here. I've got some 3F in here and this is GoX uh, 3F black powder in there. We're going to load it up with uh, 15 grains of triple F and we're going to put some Oxyoke Wonder Wads in it and some 375 round balls. 
Now these are pretty difficult to load in there and I would really like to have a ball starter like this. This is for more of my larger caliber guns. I think this one's set up for 50 cal and it just will not put it in there. So I do have a 36 caliber ball starter on this shorter ramrod here. And unfortunately it will not fit in my uh, percussion stand that I made for the revolvers and stuff. I thought I had covered all my bases with making it adjustable but it's just not gonna happen. So 36, I mean 15 grains of triple F in there. So we'll put it in the powder measure here. And yes, I am gonna go ahead and load it in my um, studio here and then we'll take it out to the, uh, the saloon and give it a few shots. All right, we'll go ahead and load the right barrel first. So there's 15 grains there. Now, I kind of wish this set up a little easier because I don't want to risk dumping the powder out. We'll get a couple of these Oxyoke Wonder Wads out of here. Now, these are a lubricated wad. Um, So that's all the lube that I'm going to put in there. So we'll go ahead and push that first patch down in there. And then we'll go ahead and load up another 15 grains. And I think this is a 30 grain spout on there, maybe just a little shy. And we'll go ahead and dump it down the left barrel this time. and put the other Wonder Wad in there. And we'll push that down inside there. And then we'll go ahead and get a couple of the round balls out of there. Now one of the nice things about the old revolvers is having the loading arm on there. It really gave you the leverage you needed to push these down in there. It's not the case with this thing. Um, it is, they are really tough to get down in there. And in fact, a little hammer type device, and we're just gonna go ahead and use the ball starter to get it down in there. Now these are smooth bores. There is no rifling in these barrels there. So accuracy is not going to be top notch with them. Yes, the balls are getting deformed as I hammer them down in there and that was kind of how they were loaded. Okay, very tough to get loaded in there with not having a stand or having a loading arm or anything to help you push them down in there. Now, I do not have any percussion caps on these yet, so we're gonna get some Remington number 10s and we're gonna get out to the range and give it a few shots. Okay, I may have lied to you. I said I was gonna use uh, Remington number 10s, but I've got uh, CCI number 10s here, which is what I used the last time I took this thing out and shot it. The biggest difference between the uh, number 10s and number 11s is gonna be the length of the skirt. There are some diameter differences too, but the biggest thing is gonna be the length of the skirt and how far that percussion cap is gonna be able to be pushed down on that nipple. Now to load these things up, we're gonna go ahead and pull it back a little bit. Now this, if you put it on half cock, they just lift up a tiny bit above the nipple there. So it's really not far enough to get the, the uh, cap on there, but we're gonna to have to lift it up a little bit more. Be very careful with this too because the caps are, um, they're not so much pressure sensitive as they are impact sensitive. So when that hammer comes down and hits those, that's when it's really going to cause them to go off. Uh, if you just put gentle pressure on them, and what I've done here is I've got the hammer set on the half cock position. I'm going to push them down a little bit. I don't think the hammers are actually pushing on them very hard. Um, but you got to be really careful with these things. Now this, I'm going to let all the, I'm going to take it off the half cock. So right now that is pushing on the hammer. And then that's the half cock position. It's very, very, very short. Okay, so now that I got the caps on there, they're already loaded up. We're going to do a couple test shots with it. All right, now the one thing that these firearms were designed for is long distance target and hunting.
Nah, they were designed for up close and personal. So right now I am about two yards away from the target and we're gonna go ahead and cock we're gonna cock both hammers on it because the way this works, it has, it has a single trigger on it. So when you cock both of them, you pull the trigger once and I believe it's the right barrel is gonna fire first. You pull it again and then it's gonna be the left barrel. If you pull it really fast and hard, you'll get both of them to go off pretty much instantaneously or at the same time. But we're gonna pull them both back and we're gonna take just one shot, hopefully with one pull of the trigger and do center mass on the silhouette target. There's one. And the second one didn't go off. We'll go ahead and pull it again and try it again. And there went the second one. Now I was aiming kind of just, you know, not really using the sights on it because the sights are really pretty uh, ineffective on it, especially at this kind of distance. But I was aiming pretty much at center mass and I hit, uh, the first shot was kind of up in his throat. The second shot was uh, about in the eight and nine ring, but that's what this gun was for, was up close and personal stuff. All right, now here's one of the things I definitely want to point out about this gun. I don't know if you heard it. When I took that first shot, there was a sound that uh, happened behind me. This was my first shot right here. And this is, uh, I think it is uh, half inch plywood on here. And it's new, I put up new target boards. My first shot hit right there and it did not go through. My second shot hit right there and it also did not go through. It did break the wood on the back side of the target, but it did not go through there. So that sound I heard back there at the saloon was that bullet actually coming back and, and hitting it. Luckily, I was not standing square, faced up with the target. I was off at slight angle. So when it come back, it, uh, it did miss me. Thank goodness. And there are both of them right there. I was able to pick both of them up off the ground. Uh, I don't imagine they come back with enough force to do much damage, but um, still, you don't want to get hit with these things. 15 grains is pretty low power there, and I'm sure that plywood ate up a bunch of the uh, recoil, a bunch of the energy that was expended uh, with these rounds. But um, yeah, that's uh, it's a little on the scary side. So we're gonna load it up and take a couple more shots. Okay, again, so I've got my period correct possibles bag here. We're going to get it opened up and get the powder and everything back out again and the ramrod. Not the most uh, convenient or easiest pistols to load either, but um, this is not something you are going to get in a firefight with. You are going to uh, load this thing up one time uh, when you were going out to do your business or whatever you were going to do and Hopefully two shots would be all you needed. Hopefully you wouldn't need any, but if you did, if you got into a, uh, a bind or something and, and needed it, that's all you were gonna get out of it. All right, and I am gonna put two new round balls in there because uh, those other ones are so deformed that uh, we're not gonna try to reuse them. Okay, we're gonna do the 15 grains again of the triple F. You wanna definitely pay attention uh, to what you're doing. You need to make sure you've got everything in there and it's in the right way and all the way in there. And a little lead ring did get shaved off of there when I hammered that down in there. So now I'm going to use this. I'm actually going to prop it up at the bottom of the bar and use a little leverage here to push them in. So I'll be right back. Okay, that's lots of fun. I do have them both equally pushed down in there. So there should not be an air gap in there. That's one thing you do not want to have in any black powder firearms. You do not want to have an air gap in there. When you're putting the caps on these things, keep it pointed in a safe direction. Right now I've got it pointed downrange. Don't put your hand in front of anything. Just in case your fingers, your thumb did slip off of there, you're not gonna be in the, uh, the line of fire. Okay, so we got them on there. We're gonna take it out and do a couple more shots standing, not squared up with the target, but at an angle. All right, this time I'm going to aim probably at the nine below the uh, the X ring. I'm going to aim it kind of low and hopefully I'll hit somewhere in there. And I might take a little more time to try to aim it to see if it'll actually hit where I want it to do. I'm just going to cock one hammer at a time this time. 
Start with the right one first. So that hit right dead in the X right there. Now we'll do the left one. And those seem to have a little more oomph to them and they uh, looks like the second shot definitely went through the plywood. Uh, the first one, I'm not too sure. And there is the ball actually stuck in the wood right there. Now, Mr. Durant probably did not carry a, uh, a Leatherman with him. So there it is, that was the first shot there. It did hit uh, right there in the X ring and I was able to pull it out, it did not go through. The second one did go through there because the plywood was a little bit weaker in that spot because it's had a few shots taken at it already. All right guys, so there it is. This is the Ethan Allen by Hops 36 caliber double barrel Derringer or muff pistol or boot pistol. Uh, this was personal protection back in the day. I think this is modeled around somewhere around a 19 or 18, I'm sorry, um, 1860s uh, firearm. Not exactly sure of the year that uh, Ethan Allen would have made these little pistols, but uh, pretty cool little guns anyways. And this one's a pretty good reproduction of the actual Ethan Allen. The other one I had, the Belgian one, is uh, I believe much older than this one. I know it's actually much older, but I think you know what I mean. Anyways, cool little guns. Just be careful when you're shooting them what your backstop is because, like I said, that half-inch plywood that I've got up there is a little thick for 15 grains of powder. You may get a little better penetration if you put more powder in there. Uh, and one of the most dangerous things with black powder firearms is an air gap inside there that creates an explosion in there which can rupture the barrels. Uh, the amount of powder you put in there is not... I don't want to say quite as critical. I have seen some tests where they have filled the barrels completely up and had the ball right at the end there and it did not destroy the firearm. Um, but these are black powder only. No smokeless powder. None whatsoever. Not even a grain. Nothing. Black powder only. Pretty cool little firearms. Anyways, thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review and taking a look at a gun from Hell on Wheels, or at least what I think was used on Hell on Wheels. The Ethan Allen Derringer. If you could reach up here and hit this box to check out some of my other videos and hit this little button down here to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.